My name is Shabiha Mulengia Kasituluhe. And these names I was given when I was growing up because when I was born, I was not given a name. Uh, why? It's because uh, people knew that uh, uh, I was dead. So, Shabiha Mulengia, I'm a musician, I'm a mentor, a motivation speaker, I'm an author. I'm a media person, I'm a minister of the gospel. And my aim is sharing a message of hope. Why I have a, a passion for hope? Because I've uh, been in a hopeless situation. I want to be able to share that hope to people because I believe everyone needs hope to be able to start, to stand and succeed. And I believe people have a lot of potential within themselves. So. I believe that we need to be able to encourage people, uh, share that hope. And because I need you, you need me. So we need to be able to live in harmony for us to be productive, peaceful, and powerful. My story starts when I was born. I was born in a place called Wuholu, very far in the uh, eastern part of Congo eastern part of Congo, in the village, rural, 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 Kule. Yes. So that's where I was born. And um, my mom told me, uh, told me when I was born, uh, they were not expecting me. Now the word I was born prematurely. And as I was born in the village, there was no hospital, there was no road. They lost hope. Uh, when I was born, uh, the midwife was very far. They had to go take the midwife. In the process, the midwife was uh, the field. They had to call the midwife to come. And uh, the fact that uh, I did not cry and I saw that it's like this person is dying, they lost hope. And the people were waiting for my death. But my mom had faith. And because in the process, I was very, very sick. And uh, according to my mom, my belly was becoming big, big, and I uh, had a problem with uh, my, my, my stomach. So we were far from the hospital. It's so, like uh, my mom would walk two days to reach the hospital, uh, two days. So many people told my mom, this person is dying. There is no need for you to bother. Let's wait. Instead of you going to two days uh, to another town and to come with the, the cops, let's wait for this person to die here. But my mom had faith. She said, no, my, 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 my child is not dying. And that's the reason why my date of birth was not recorded. And the name, they didn't give me the name because they know hmm, this one. But my mom had faith. Uh, after a few months, she took me to the hospital, and this hospital told no, this case is complicated because the baby was big. Now this, uh, it's, a, it's a different case. So she went from this hospital to another hospital to another hospital, a link, fifth hospital, and she got someone who said, okay, let's try, but we don't know. There is no hope for this person to live. So she was, was able to operate and... Uh, Akatobo Kitofu, when I was able to operate, and then my mama say that the time I was able to sleep after like uh, uh, three, four months, the baby is there. So when uh, my mom came to the village, and people were coming, eh, we thought that uh, eh, the baby still alive, still alive. They was they were coming to check the dead. Say no, <laughs> we, we knew that this one will not uh, survive. But God had a great plan for me. I was able to grow, I uh, became one year, two years, I was able to, to walk. And they say, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. From the hospital, we had to move from, um, from Chondo to Butembo now, uh, where I did my primary school. Okay, after my primary school, life became hard. And one of my brother was studying in Bunia. Bunia is like 250 ki kilometers from Butembo. Uh, that's where I went. And my brother now was studying in the university. 
who called me, he was married now, he called me, he had no job. And because I'm the last born in my family, we are 10. So my brother encouraged me to study, to study. And uh, uh, that life was not easy there. Life was tough. I was a student without scholarship, without support, married and supporting me. So I had to work very hard, I had to work very hard. And uh, I thank God I was very bright, bright. And because there was no food in the house, now I had the, the I, I, I would say, okay, now how do I live here without food? So I'll uh, make a plan, say, today I'll eat in someone's, uh, in this house, tomorrow in the other house. <laughs> That's how I used to live as a young boy. Ah, when I look back at my life, okay. Because I say, no, I need to study and uh, there was no food in the house. So, okay. So I managed to complete my high school after a long time of struggle, struggle. But there I, I entered in uh, as church. I uh, was going to church and they mentored me and that's where I discovered my talent. And then in Buni, I was able to, I was a musician in the church, I was uh, in the choir, I was leading a Sunday school, and uh, people loved me. And uh, when I, I finished my high school, I produced a movie. Because uh, I saw that what was going on in Bunia. I said, no, I need to encourage people that, no, we need to stop fighting. Vita and Mbaya, war is bad. And uh, war in Congo has been going on. So the movie went on TV. They showed it on TV and said, oh, wow, this is a good movie. And some people were again say, no, you, who are you to tell people that it's like you are supporting one part. And you remember, they were targeting my tribe. And my tribe is called Nande. They were targeting that tribe. And one time, they, Tawali Tufukuza, we had to... Uh, they say no, they don't want of Nande from the Bunia. And still in Bunia, because of war, I risked my life several times. Uh, there was a time uh, the rebel came, uh, put a gun on my head, they wanted to blow my head because that time they were uh, shooting on the head, blow the head, and uh, God saved me. So one time I was uh, just moving around, I was moving, then I was arrested. You, who are you? Um, because uh, of my name and also my tribe, I said, okay, now we are going to... Uh, they, there was a place where they were taking young people and they would, they would bury them alive. So they were taking me there. But God saved me. So we went with them and I prayed. I said, no, me, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I'm just a student. So God, say, God saved me because I don't know how I survived. Because many of my age men were being killed. Just innocent young men, they take them. In my hometown, like Butembo, there are many uh, young men that were uh, buried life. And these things are going on since that time. So the war, and uh, why the war is because uh, Congo is blessed with a lot of resources. When there is order, when there is peace, uh, people will not loot. So they are those people uh, who take advantage of the, uh, the war, they will fund the war so that they can be continue to loot. And they are looting in billion, a lot of resources, mineral gold, diamond, name all the, the minerals are in Congo. And because of that, uh, some people feel like uh, if we, if war stop, that means uh, Yes. So that has been uh, the trend uh, uh, since, uh, uh, I'll say, 1994. It's very terrifying. It's very terrifying. So the war in Congo is very, very bad. And uh, also that also give me, uh, what I do is to give hope to the Congolese people. So I do radio program. My uh, radio program are being aired in like uh, 30 radio stations. They have record messages here that are sent there, just giving them hope. There is hope. There is a, uh, my program is called Kuna Tumaini. 
that's a radio program. So I send radio program there. Personally, I've not gone there because of what is going on. We are scared of, uh, of our lives. So when uh, those incidents, uh, oh, they wanted to kill me. So I left Bunia. I said, no, this place I can't be able to leave because of what is happening. I need to uh, leave Bunia. I went to Butembo. All the situation still there, the same. You see the, his war, you have to run, you have to, to sleep in the bush. And there is no peace. There is no freedom of expression. So when uh, one, uh, one person saw the movie, so said, okay, young man, I see you are very talented. There is a school in Kenya called Deisa University. You could go to that school and study and learn. So that guy was uh, as a pastor. He brought... Uh, he gave me application. I was able to apply, and he took the the application to Daystar. And when I was in Butembo, I seeing what was happening. Say these things, huh? I can't be able to survive here. So for me, I say, okay, let me run to Kenya uh, so that I can also study. So I came when I came in, in a lorry. So uh, there was uh, there are many lorries that come from Congo eastern part of Congo to uh, Kenya, Mombasa. So I found a driver, say, okay, I'm going to Kenya. And now, okay. He say, yes, I want to go to Kenya. Okay, then I get my passport, got my passport. So we entered Nalori. So we came, the, uh, the driver was able to pay my visa. And then the driver, I told him I'm coming to study. And my pastor gave me a recommendation letter. And uh, no one was expecting me in Kenya. No one knew that I was coming. I was just taking a, a step of faith. So I came. He left me uh, in Mulolongo. And then in the morning, he gave me a, he called someone to come and pick me. So a guy came with a car. He took me to Athi River. Remember, I had a recommendation letter. And it was written AIC. And this person was saying AIC Athi River. He didn't know the pastor to whom it may concern. So I went with that letter to that pastor. And the pastor said, okay. Okay, you are coming to study? Yes, yes, I don't have a place to stay. The pastor was so kind. He welcomed me. And I understand that I don't know English. And I come to study in English. And I remember when I was in high school, I was poor in English. And I... If there is a course that uh, in, our, in our system we repeat, when you, like if you are going to the next class and you did not, you have to repeat the course, they give you an exam. And if you fail that exam, you have to repeat the class. And if there is a course that was repeating, was English. Uh, you see, you, you, you go to a place, uh, like uh, you go to church, you see people laugh, and so I wanna, wanna check and in, what are they laughing? <laughs> but now I say, now, I don't know the language. I'm running from Congo. For me to survive in Kenya, I need to know the language. And I didn't have enough money. I had money for my visa and a few coins that I had. Okay. Now, I don't know. What I did is say, I'll teach myself the language. So I had a French Bible and an English Bible. And I would read and do the monologue. He's going Ilva. Uh, my name is Mono. So I did monologue, monologue. In the house, I was just doing monologue, monologue, reading a lot. I didn't understand. That's how I taught myself English. And I told God, help me understand this language so that I can teach and preach in it. And I was able to teach myself. I didn't go to college. I taught myself English. Now, when I reached at the river, the pastor was kind to me. But you see, sometimes you move from struggle to problem. Now, in the church, this person did not know me. There were, there were some problems in the church. And I was given 48 hours to, to leave the church. And away, I don't know anyone here. So, 48 hours, they were told there are visitors coming, so you, you need to leave. And you see, I was not contributing. You stay with someone and you are not contributing. So it's like uh, they will get tired of you. So, okay, now I 
can't go back to Congo. And the person who say he will sponsor me change their mind. I say, ah, no, what is this? Studying? Okay, that was 2001. Then, uh, luckily, I was admitted, and then I said, okay, you can start now. You need to look for, for someone. And then I called the person who was supposed to, to help me to study. He said, oh, no, we are not able to. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I was spending time on the internet, sending e any email that I'll find. I'll say, please help me. I want to study. I'm from a need family. Please. And I sent over 5,000 emails. No response. But I knew I'm not leaving this university without that degree. So as I was staying with a pastor, after giving me 48 hours to leave, and then I went to stay in someone's balcony, and then I got a, a, a friend, someone from Congo, who had pity on me, and they said, okay, come to my house. And also, he also got tired of me because I was not contributing. I had to leave that house and uh, I went to rent a house where I was paying five uh, and five hundred shillings. And I got one room. I was sleeping there like a king. Oh, sh go to sleep. Because there, at least someone helped me with the mattress and I was cooking with stuff. Okay. Now from there, still, still pursuing, looking for scholarships. Scholarship that 2001, 2002, 2003. Okay, without scholarship. Sometimes I'll go, if the school allow me one semester study, another semester I'm home. Then the school told me, Now, young man, we want to give you uh, a ticket to go back in your country because now you don't have scholarship. I told them, I don't leave this, I can't leave this university without a degree. And remember, I'm the only guy who has gotten a chance among the 10 of us who got a chance to go to the university. My brother went to university, has a diploma. Uh, he didn't go to, now I'm doing a degree. And the first one in the family. So I can't let my family down. So I was told a sort of story, go back, you know. And then I endured. It took me, long story short, it took me eight years to finish my degree. From 2001, I graduated 2008. Now, when I graduated, I said, okay, now is it time to go back home? No. Then uh, that time, I got a place to do, to volunteer, to work in a, in a radio station. I was working in a radio station, and there I did a, a program that people loved, daily devotion, and that's where my radio station, my, my radio program started giving hope to people, giving hope to people, giving hope to people. And people love the program. And as I was working in that uh, station, I got a lot of listeners. And then I was told, oh, your contract is in Kafkuso, Apotena, station. But God is good. God has a great plan. In everything, God is, will always stand with me. So I was shown the door. And uh, I didn't know, I didn't know where to go. I didn't want again to go back to Congo even after my studies because I know now I'm a journalist. If I go there and I'll try to report, report, I'll put my problem, uh, myself into trouble. So what I did after I found a friend of mine who said, I have an office, you can go stay there. You can go stay in my office. So that's good. I took my bag. I went to the office. God is good. That God is great. And that person uh, came from Congo with uh, some CDs, uh, duplicated those CDs. And as I was duplicating those CDs, and I saw in the in the in the that choir a lady that uh, attracted me. So, ah, good. Now this lady is okay. How do I approach this lady? She is in Congo and I'm here. So what I did, uh, I bought some Bibles. I sent like, four, there was four, to the choir master and uh, to that particular one. I wrote, uh, uh, I sent the Bible. And the one that lady 
got the Bible, say, ah, okay, who has sent me a Bible? Remember, you are sending an English Bible to someone who speaks French. What a kind of gift that you're sending. <laughs> so I sent this gift to this lady, and this lady replied, okay, look for my number, got my number, sent a message. Thank you for the Bible, I got the Bible, thank you. And that's how we started communicating. And then I said, okay, me, I'm interested. And I went to meet her when I was going to give my dowry. So I didn't see her nikaenda nikamoa without dating her. Say, okay, took another step of faith. And she turned out to be amazing and a wonderful lady. You see, God does wonderful things. You see, I was just from the, the station. God was saying, this is the, the, there is a miracle for you. This. And uh, sometimes someone can push you and you fall down and you follow the gold. That's what happened to me. For me, um, when I was 15 years, I started praying for my wife. I would pray and ask God, God, give me a wonderful wife. This lady accepted me without knowing me. So I, I told her that oh, no, I'm ready, I want to marry you. And uh, the family, my family, they loved me, they respect me because I've been walking. They didn't hear stories of this man. Yes. And you know what? Just as, let me tell you something. My prayer was to get a virgin. Because me also, I was keeping myself pure up to the marriage. So, And when I was telling my friends that me, I will marry a virgin, and God surprised me. And did you know what? I was told, no, you see, uh, this lady, my, my wife is outgoing. And you see, when you're outgoing, for some people, they think, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> this person this is not serious. And then uh, God answered our prayer. So I went there. Mm, I saw her in the evening. I greeted her. I saw her live. Then uh, in the morning, I went to my town and tell my people, me, I found someone. Yes, I, I had some money. Then in my, my, my tribe, we give 10 goats. That is the dowry. 10 goats. Whether rich or poor, it's 10 goats. Now, those goats can be converted into cash. Like uh, someone will say, one goat is 10,000, or one I will say 5,000, another 15,000, 20,000, depending on the family. But it's 10 goats. If you bring the 10 goats, they'll give you the wife. And in our culture, in my tribe, they don't, we don't believe in come we stay relationship. People believe in marriage, wedding. And every day in that town, there is a wedding. There is a wedding. And if you go, go through a wedding, you go, can, this uh, shortcut, uh, people will not respect you. They value wedding. So, we well, went there, we gave the dowry, the Receivers within the traditional wedding, uh, traditional wedding, gave the dowry. A few months later, we did our wedding, and I came with the lady. And for me, I knew it's, I will not go wrong when it comes to marriage because I've been praying. And my mom, before she died, she was praying for me. My parents were praying for me about getting, because I was the last born, and they knew that, well, you will bring us great things. They had faith in me. And I was a prayerful person. And uh, let me tell you, what you confess is what you possess. And believe me, people need to change the narrative that they are no good wife. They are no good husband. Great men are outside there. There are many. But it's because we are blind. We can't be able to see them. People need to change their language. Say, there are great and amazing men outside there. And to believe if you believe, you receive it. Because for us, we have been married 12 years. Now we are 12 years. We are still in our honeymoon, by the way. We are still in our honeymoon. So we came with that lady. And we started from zero. I didn't have a job. So uh, we came. It was an empty. And I told her. And she told me something. I remember for her, she was from a wealthy family. Her family was well off. And she told me, don't worry, you know what? Uh, uh, as long as you have the, 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 there is water there, so you put water in the, in the stove. Before that water uh, boils, yes, boils, 
you'll have a uh, unga you'll have a uh, flour you'll be able to make ugali be able to make food there so don't worry let's start small start with faith and we'll reach there so we came we came in the morning we went to had rented uh, there was a, a house in umoja so it was empty so we went with her to the market to isli we bought our first uh, our mattress we sat down there yes and we were happy we grew we grew now we thank god where we are we have three daughters it was not easy but where there is love love will always win and uh, relationship that uh, uh, builds on love trust a great relationship that's the reason why i have passion for marriage because i believe when you hear people struggling marriage they people don't supposed to struggle in marriage I, i think we need to be able to change our attitude what is your attitude your attitude will uh, change the way you look at yourself the way you look at things i think the belief we have first we need to be grateful finding a man is a blessing finding a woman is a great blessing it's a favor from god so what you find you need to treasure it treat it well i've talked it in my book men are crying women are weeping it's a great book uh talked about marriage that you need to treasure what you find the problem we always take for granted what we have for you to enjoy what you have you need to value it treasure it so for people to enjoy their marriages they need to love treasure treat well talk nicely and think right about your perception uh, and in my book i say uh, men are crying i talked about uh, their tree. your your partner can either be your friend can be a foreigner to you or a foe a foe is an enemy an opponent you like uh, you're fighting you're competing a foe a foreigner is someone who is a stranger to you there are people who are living like that but i believe people need to be like friends be open to one another and trust build that trust and i believe there are many people who rush into marriage marry you need to learn also i think people are in marriage they are not willing to learn learn if you want to live and lead and enjoy your relationship so i believe so that's how i we i met my my wonderful wife so we started from zero we are still uh, progressing trusting god for the better future and uh, during that time without uh, when i came to kenya and tried to apply start you see you live in struggle you study in struggle getting a job in struggle but there is one statement i wake up with you have a bright future do not give up that is my statement and uh, when i was writing this book i was talking to myself you have a bright future do not give up you have a bright future do not give up when i came from congo you have a bright future do not give up and that is my message you have a bright future do not give up and um, as i was uh, as a first in congo i used to write tract brochures that i used to give free of charge to people and then people say no this uh, tract huh, you need to turn them to books and i say okay do you me writing a book writing a book i don't like i have experience but i took a bold step and i was uh, able to 2018 i was able to release my books now now i have written uh, about 15 books published four of them and uh, god has been good god has been good and it's a it's a challenge people love my book those who have come across my books they have loved them and uh, you can hear stories how uh, books are changing like uh, men are crying women are weeping many have said how their marriage have been changed transformed with that book as someone was telling me he bought a book and they were not talking but that book had become a study guide in their marriage and their now as someone say okay i didn't know these things exist but until i read that book and have come it's it's like have opened eyes another person say 
we were about to divorce, but that book became a counsel and a solution. And uh, many tem testimonies, uh, many messages of people who have read my books. So I, I believe, uh, indeed, I wrote those books uh, during my hard time, tough time, but now they are ch changing and touching many people. Yes, what uh, I do also is also helping people who maybe who have uh, written books, help them on how they can be able to, to publish their books. Also, uh, my wife is an uh, entrepreneur. Uh, she sells uh, kitenges she, uh, with her sister. They do, they have uh, a Nova hair. They have a, a company where they sell a hair product. They make hair product, the very, very nice hair product. So my wife sells uh, uh, vitenge, uh, tacky cloth, and uh, also a cloth from uh, China. So that's what uh, we try to do. And also, I do printing, I also a media, I'm a media consultant, and also I'm a motivational speaker. You can invite me to come and in motivate uh, new organization. I love encouraging people, and also I'm a mentor. And my prayer is to be able to get people who can be able to stand with me, because I have a vision, sharing a message of hope to people. I want to be able to reach many people with a message of hope, so for anyone who get, want to get in touch with me, my number is uh, plus 254. If you're outside Kenya, it's plus 254, 734-125-250. Uh, my website is thereishopeforyou.org, thereishopeforyou.org. My YouTube channel is Shaviha Molengia. Uh, please get there, subscribe, say something. I would like to meet you there and I'll have a lot to share with you. Also tell me something and also my Instagram, you can get me and please uh, support. I have been able to publish the four books, support, partner with me so that I can be able to reach many people. And I want to, uh, my brother, I want to translate these books in French uh, because uh, I want also my people to be able to get the message. So I need your support. Also recording my message, I have about uh, a thousand messages that I have recorded. I want to record more so that I can be able to reach many people. And also I've written over a thousand songs. I want to record them also they require fund. If you feel like you can support me, I really, really appreciate so that because I have the message, but I don't have the means. My mom taught me that serve people through service, God will bless you. So, and I believe that uh, uh, thank you so, so much for this channel. Great people continue supporting this channel. It's a, it's a great channel that is inspiring people. And uh, my great message is there is hope. Don't give up. Know that uh, great things are coming on your way. Live with hope knowing that you'll make it no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. God loves you, has a plan for you. You need to silence other voices. In other words, you'll hear a lot. There are many, many voices that, that you hear that will tell you, no, who are you and what do you think you are? You can't do anything. Silence those voices. I have heard many, but for me, I believe God has the last word.